Today is August the 3rd, 2016, and I'm going to do one more uh, attempt at documenting this 833 amp. It's running right now, as you can see, the plate's red. It's got 3,000 volts on the, on the plate. Um, I've tried various driving sections for it, and I've actually got one that's really pretty nice. It uses a uh, half of a 6SN7 and a 6V6. I've tried 6L6s, KT88s, etc. The way I'm driving it right now, basically according to this schematic, I wanted a low impedance so much I made a cathode follower out of this tube right here. This is the 6V6 at this time. I labeled it 6550 where I put the uh, the inductance in the uh, cathode with some resistance down here to bias it. End up with about 17 volts bias for this uh, 6V6, which is a good value. I oscillate the uh, the bias here with this uh, capacitor, and this is the 833. That's what's running right now. Let me show you some some data. If you like data, well, we gotta get gotta get one of the lights off first. Okay, this trace right here is a frequency response of a little 6v6 transformer, 6v6 push-pull transformer. It's this guy right here. It was just kind of a, a starting point. This is the frequency response of the 6v6. It does a uh, 6v6 push-pull uh, transformer. It does pretty good down here and at 20 Hertz. It's flat. It starts tapering off it's down about 3 dB at uh, 20 kilohertz. This is the frequency response of the big power transformer that I'm using, that big monstrous thing. It's actually better. This is with an 8 ohm load on it, and this is with no load. The, the, the load was on this, there was a uh, 4 ohm load on this one, because it's uh, secondary is 4 ohms. There's an 8 ohm load on this one, and uh, this was with no load. This is the big transformer, these two curves right here. But I did this one just to compare it. Okay, now if we look at some other data I've been collecting over some period of time here. See, this is frequency response. This is the frequency response of the uh, amplifier section driving the grid of the 833. It's pretty flat. Uh, there's down. See, there's minus 1 dB, so it's down just a fraction of a decibel at 20 hertz. And it's down about 1 dB at uh, 20 kilohertz. So the driver is good. This is the frequency response of the entire amplifier. This is the 833. This is driving this amplifier right here. It, the, the low frequency response is just horrible. Just, just absolutely horrible. Okay, let's see. This is uh, another frequency response plot of the entire amplifier. See, it's uh, it, it, it consistently at about 300 hertz comes up to here's my minus one dB. Does pretty good, and it does really good on high frequencies. So from 300 hertz up, it's not bad, but from 300 hertz down. See, this thing's down minus 13 dB at 20 hertz. The low end response is, is just uh, completely unacceptable. Let's see. Well, that's the same one. Here's one of um, THD of the big amp. The whole amp. The 833 output. Well, see, THD at 200 hertz is... Well, there's 3%, so it's off the scale. We get back out here to 300 hertz again, and it's about a little less than 2.5%, barely acceptable. And then it goes down. See, here's a half percent here. It goes down to below 1% at a kilohertz and goes well out here to past 20 kilohertz at 0.6%. So, again, every one of these is telling us the same thing. The high frequency response of these things is this thing is uh, pretty good and if you listen to music that people have played on it well they all play you know 
tinkly little music. I, I've never heard anybody playing some heavy metal. I want to hear some ACDC. <laughs> uh, here is here is the uh, THD again of the uh, driver amplifier. See, it's uh, at 20 hertz. It's at 0.9 uh, percent acceptable. It's running about 0.7 percent all the way out to uh, well 0.8 percent right there at uh, all the way out to 25 kilohertz. 20 kilohertz is right there. 25 right there. So what I'm driving it with is uh, pretty good. I'm completely satisfied with that. Everything makes sense. The bias voltage on it makes sense. Everything makes sense. Uh, the bias voltage adjustments up here that I can make on the 833 itself are, make a difference. But um, I'm not sure this thing's ever going to work right at low frequencies. I've exhausted myself. I've, uh, I've built um, circuits that I have found and um, I'm providing it with plenty of drive. See right now, just for the heck of it, it's running at about 100 hertz. I guess I set it at 197 hertz. 10.7% THD at 11.7 watts. And uh, there's what it looks like. It's not the most horrible thing in the world at 100 hertz. Let me crank it up to about uh, 300. And then it starts smoothing out again. See, 300 hertz. Doesn't look too bad. There's like 299. Up to 20 watts at 3%. This is voltage across 8 ohms. Square that, divide by 8, and you get that. So there it is. Let's see, what is that? 30, let's put it back down to 200 hertz, go to 2 kilohertz. See, at 2 kilohertz, it's down at 1%. 22 watts at 20 kilohertz it's only a half percent at 20 watts so there's like 20 kilohertz thereabouts point six percent 20 watts so it does very good in the high end and uh, so does so does the driver amplifier these two this 6 I said 7 6 v 6 combo is what's driving the grid of it and I keep it down at I get full output at about 0 dBm input here that way I don't overdrive the uh, the driver stages so that's about it I don't know if I can do any more that's about all I know to do if anybody's got any ideas how to make this thing work at low frequencies I'm open to suggestions, otherwise I'm going to shelve this thing for a while.